your primary caregiver is very important for that child for attachment and development of their own stress regulatory and emotion regulation systems, and that's what's going to translate to shifts in those key regulatory systems that, that we have pictured here. So we look at um, uh, stress in the caregivers and how that might relate uh, to these outcomes in the children. Uh, early on, we show that there was a direct relationship between a continuous measure of caregiver stress, just moms reporting every um, couple of months how out of control they felt that their lives were, this um, a stress appraisal measure, the perceived stress scale. And we showed a, a dose-response relationship between higher level stress in the caregivers and greater increased likelihood of having that child go on and de develop a repeated wheeze um, prospectively as we followed these children. In those same children, we isolated blood when they were about three years old. Remember in the cord blood, we said prenatal stress was linearly associated with disruption, immune profiles that suggested increased risk of uh, an asthma phenotype. Same, similarly, we did it when these kids were older, and just showing in the, um, the, the white area here, this is mean maternal stress, repeatedly measured over the first three years of the child's life. And it looked at lymphocyte proliferative response. How activated were this kid's lymphocytes when we isolated them at year, age three years if we were then to stimulate them with different things, in this case, dust mite allergen. And kids who grow up in these high um, ongoing, uh, homes with ongoing high levels of stress, measured here through caregiver stress, were much more prone um, to having a very active immune system that was responding to these other environmental factors that they're also seeing during that time. So the stress is sort of priming the pump, and then if they're, they're at the same time being bombarded by high levels of pollutants and, and allergens and other things that are going to be shifting these systems, we're going to see greater uh, impact. This is busy. I couldn't figure out how to do it in a picture, but I just want to show the other thing that we looked at in these data are interactions with um, the, the traffic-related air pollutants. And in this case, we use land use regression modeling to look at black carbon as well as PM 2.5 um, as our indicators of the air pollutants. We put them in the same models with uh, a, a, a community-level stressor here. So now we're not looking at individual level stress across those domains, but I, t I, I mentioned that another way we look at it is, is at the community level, and, and community level exposure to violence and crime levels in the communities is how we're uh, measuring that. And we look at that low, medium, and high levels of community violence, and this is self-reported on a questionnaire. It's not based on institutionalized data. Um, and then, as, and as well as our black carbon and PM 2.5 uh, indicator. Because a lot of people, when we said we were going to look at violence exposure and how that may have an impact on asthma expression in these kids, well, it's just a marker of bad environment. It's going to just be a proxy for bad uh, air pollution. At any rate, what we're showing is that they, they stay in the model together, and they both have uh, independent effects. You see about a two-fold increased risk of having a child to go on and develop repeated wheeze, whether you're in the higher level air pollution or the highest level ECV group. Similarly for um, PM 2.5. And actually, if you put all three of them in the model, um, all three of them uh, pretty much stay in there as well, which I show on the next slide, but I won't. Uh, I want to sort of talk about the interaction effect. So the, uh, here's the same model. We've stratified them by their level of um, community violence exposure, and we're comparing Median, above the median ETV, low ETV here, high ETV versus low ETV here in this one. And then we look at it based on lower high levels of the air pollution exposure. We actually, there's suggested a difference. So if you're high level of community violence exposure and low BC exposure, the moderate levels of BC exposure, so below the median, that's where we actually start to see suggestion of an interactive effect. It may be that the effect of the air pollution at the high levels sort of overwhelms our ability to be able to measure above and beyond that what might be going on with the violence, but we do find a, a, a suggestion in stratified analysis that there's an interaction. It's not me reaching statistical significance, maybe a power issue. We do actually find an additive um, interaction, a significant additive inter interaction between the community violence exposure and modest levels of the BC exposure. Um, so people say, well, why isn't it the high, high group that's most impacted and, and is this important? 
To me, this is important because if we start to do our intervention, we design intervention strategies and we're focused on one thing, this is why cumulative, you've got to think of these cumulative risk models because if you're focused on one thing and you say, I'm going to go in and we're going to fix, we're going to try to fix the air pollution issue, and we're going to try to reduce uh, exposure to these traffic related pollutants, and so you get it down to some more modest level, but yet you don't take care of these other things that are also. Um, dry, you know, imp impacting the effects underlying. You're still going to have risk there if you leave the stress part alone, for example. 